Well, hi, it's Rebecca again, and we are going to cover um, printing from InDesign's print booklet feature to one of our color printers. We'll choose the uh, uh, Xerox Phaser 7400DN. I'm going to open a document, so let me get to InDesign. This may look familiar to you if you watched the recent black and white printer demonstration. Uh, of course, if you're an InDesign and this comes up, we would obviously want to uh, link images uh, in the links panel. Uh, you'll see that there is an image placed, but it's not uh, on the computer, it's not on the local drive, and this would be a big problem. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to um, skip over that. So this is, again, a 20-page booklet that we're working on. It shows there's 18 pages. However, we do have 20 complete pages. Well, they're not completely designed, but we do have 20 pages in the document. The first two pages are t um, page number A and B, and then we don't start our page numbering until the third uh, page in. Now, if you need a review on that, you might want to check previous um, uh, notes on how to do that, changing pages, and uh, I can go through real quick, right-click on a page, go to numbering and section options, make sure that third page you click on start page numbering at, type a page one in there, make sure their style is one, two, three, and also make sure section start is clicked on. And then for the cover and inside front cover, you would do the same. You would just only on the one, the first page, you would right click, go to numbering and section options. You want to um, leave it at automatic page numbering, but instead of the style being one, two, three, it's A, B, C, D. Okay, so that's a little review of how to change sections in a book and get page numbering to act differently. Okay, so that we're ready to print to the uh, color printer, which is the 7400DN. Uh, it's a little bit older printer here in our lab, so um, you know this would be great for a uh, color first draft. Uh, you can see that my pages are not really ready for being printed to color, but again, this is for demo purposes. I would prefer that you, something like this, we might proof on the black and white printer. But for demonstration purposes, let's print to the color printer. Now, prior to printing, we would have gone to the Apple um, and gone to System Press Preferences up in the left-hand corner, and we would have loaded print drivers. Now if you don't know how to load print drivers there is a previous video uh, defining how to do that. You'll see I have black and white, the Phaser 7400 color, and the Phaser 7800 color which would be for more of a final design. Okay so I'm going to close that out, go back to InDesign, and we're going to, to use the print, uh, print booklet feature, pardon me, it's file, print booklet. We don't choose the print feature because it will not put pages in the right order. So I'm going to go to File and Print Booklet. And in the Print Booklet dialog box, by default, margins may have, uh, in this area, that automatically adjust to fit marks and bleeds. It may be checked. So make sure that's unchecked. And you type in uh, an eighth of an inch, 0.125. So you want to uncheck automatically adjust to fit marks and bleeds and put in 0.125. You do want print blank printer spreads on in the event that you have any blank pages in the book. Um, sometimes people will put blank pages in a book near the end or the beginning, and if you don't check that, it may exclude them and it'll put all of your pages out of order. So make sure you have print blank pages selected. I'm going to preview this. Now, normally the preview doesn't look quite this good, but I've already done one demo, so let me change this a little bit to something that you might see. Uh, or expect to see. So here's what you might expect to see. Red. Red is bad. That means the items won't print. So um, it also means the paper size is not big enough to hold this book. Uh, you will see that pages are next to one another in an odd fashion. 16 goes next to page 1 and 2 goes next to page 15. This is called impositioning or a paginated order and InDesign is doing this for us through the print booklet. Now, it does look odd, but when we put all these pages together and when they'll come out in the right order of the printer, uh, when we fold them and put them together, it will actually be in the right reader's order. So these are printer spreads, not reader's spreads. Reader's spreads would be uh, four next to five. So we're, and six next to seven. So we're in printer spreads. Now, in order to change um, your page size or your paper size, so that your pages can accommodate uh, or can be can fit onto that, you will hit the print settings button, which is in the lower middle area of your screen. We're going to print to the color printer, so we're going to change the printer from the black and white printer to the color 7400. 
Now I know the other day we were having a problem with toner, uh, waste toner cartridges being full, and I'm pretty sure they will be, but so we'll expect a warning later on that, but it shouldn't impede us from being able to do the demo. So I'm going to change this to the color uh, Xerox Phaser 7400DN. Um, you again want print blank pages on in the event that you have any interior pages that are empty, such as the inside front cover, inside back cover. Uh, copies one, everything else you'll leave, leave alone. So this is in the general area. In the setup, we're going to change it from letter to tabloid. Now you also have tabloid oversize. Tabloid oversize also is tabloid extra, that's 12 by 18. So if you have some paper that is 12 by 18, then you may print on 12 by 18 to this printer. If you have paper um, that's only 11 by 17, just choose tabloid. Okay, so make sure you're not choosing the wrong paper for the job. Now as far as orientation, you could go portrait or landscape depending on your book and how well it fits within that page. So uh, I'll just go landscape on mine. Make sure scale to fit is unchecked, and usually by default, the page position will say upper left, which is bad. So we don't want that. This will print your pages um, opposite sides in the upper left corner, so they will not match up. One, they'll look sh completely shifted away from one another when you look through the paper through light. And so we want these registered as best as the printer can, front to back. So we're going to tell this page position to be centered. All right, we're ready to move on to the next area of the uh, segments of, of options here. So under setup you'll see uh, marks and bleed and we do want to turn crop marks on and registration marks on. Now they are not by default on I just happened to print a few minutes ago and they're still selected. Your bleed will by default have uh, use document bleed settings checked. You want to uncheck that and you want to type in the .125 inch, eighth of an inch bleed and click on the link so that they all become the same. Now again, it won't automatically have .125 in there. It will not automatically have crop marks and registration marks. You will have to click on those and input those making sure use document bleed settings is checked off. Okay, now for the next place that we're going to go, we don't have to do anything else in output, graphics, color management. We should be okay there. I am going to go to the page setup in the lower left hand corner and I'm going to investigate to make sure that um, and I'm going to hit OK on the warning. Hello. I'm going to investigate to make sure that um, the printer in the page setup actually isn't saying any printer. It needs to say color printer Xerox Phaser 7400. Okay, clearly we have an issue here. There we go. Uh, it does say color Xerox 7400. You want this to match what you had on the previous window. So that's good. Tabloid is good. And landscape, in this case, I'm doing a landscape uh, orientation. If portraits are the way you need to go, click on the other one. But this all looks good, so it didn't default to something weird. Now, the last place I'm going to go in here, which is just critical, is printer. Now, you will see something that looks like this. Uh, it will be more of a foreshortened window. You don't have many details. You don't want to just click on two-sided and you know, hope you're having a great day here. So don't just click on two-sided. Click on show details. And what you do want to see is you do want to see this little preview of a page. Now it doesn't show you all the information on a page. It just shows you a, like a piece of paper with a number. Now what we want to do is on two-sided printing, we can either put it on long edge binding or short edge binding. Now, I don't so much pay attention to this verbiage. I'm going to choose one or the other. What I'm paying attention to is the photo or this image. The binding, you want that little binding mark, that little dotted line to be over on the left hand side of the image of the page. If you choose the other, it will put it at the top of the page. So I can't tell you that long edge is always correct and short edge or short edge is always correct. I can tell you that the image that is here, you do want it on the short on the uh, the side that is left. Okay, now I don't typically flip it, um, so everything here is good. The confusion sometimes happens whenever students think, "Oh, I'm going to have two pages per sheet." You know, two pages when it prints out. Uh, let the computer do this for us. If we put two pages per sheet, it will actually on you know when we're folding the book, it'll have page one and two on the same page and three and four also printed on that same page. It, it really it gets kind of nuts, so do not change pages per sheet. Leave that at one. 
All right, everything looks here uh, nice, so I'm going to hit print. Print in essence with like an OK button. And then I review. I just make sure that my crop marks are turned on, my registration marks are turned on. Um, you know, and registration marks are nice because they show you where the center of that page is. And crop marks are nice because they tell you where to cut it out. <clears throat> the bleed is set at <coughs> 0.125. Now, it won't print a bleed if you don't pull your bleeds, and we've talked about that before. So make sure you actually have graphics and image going off the page uh, an eighth of an inch so that it will actually print that bleed. So the bleed is set to print an uh, eighth of an inch past the cut line. I go back to setup and make sure it's tabloid. I got landscape. Uh, I do not want scale to fit, and I do want centered. And I'm just reviewing, okay, in case I have any blank pages, I definitely want those on. Now I'm going to hit OK, and you'll see that the preview just changed to fit more comfortably within uh, this pa paper. And you'll see also still 16 and 1 next to it. Everything looks pretty good. So we're working out pretty well. Now I'm going to hit print. I might get some warning telling me that the toner is uh, waste toner cartridge is full or whatever but normally I would hit print and oh I get a message now this is bad uh, if you get this then you have to relink your graphics and of course when I opened this I told you guys that I was missing some links and this is just a demo but you would not hit OK and go ahead and print you would cancel this go back to links and link up documents or go to file and place and place the documents if they're gone rescanning them finding them whatever but for demonstration purposes I'm going to hit OK, which we know we wouldn't normally do. Now it's going through and it's processing the data, and you'll see the printer will pop up in, on your dock. Um, it will tell you that it's spooling the job. It will tell you if there are any supply issues. Um, and it looks like we're doing pretty well here. Now if I go over the printer and it prints upside down on one side, uh, that could be a problem. If that happens, then when you go back to print booklet, and I know sometimes it's difficult to, to tell which it's going to do. Click on Print Settings down here at the bottom again. Click on Printer here near the lower left. And, on, and then where it says Two-Sided, just flip it the other way and print it again. Okay, I'm not going to hit print because I don't want to waste paper. But if it prints upside down on one side or on every other side basically, uh, choose the other uh, the other um, option for either short edge or long edge binding. Okay, this concludes the video for printing to the Xerox Phaser 7400DN color printer.